All right, so today I would like to inform you guys about um, victimless crimes and the uh, punishment that goes into them and uh, how much they're costing society as a whole. Now, it took me a little while to think about this topic. There were lots of things that were going through my mind at the time, uh, lots of different things that I could write about, but um, this is a topic that me and my friends sometimes discuss. Uh, friends from, with multiple different views from uh, conservative, progressive, libertarian, uh, liberals, all from different kinds of views, and we all have different perspectives on how this should be treated. Now, some of the victimless crimes that I'm going to explain to you guys here and why they're punished are up here, narcotics, prostitution, and the use of performance-enhancing drugs, specifically by professional athletes. And um, I'm just going to give you information on uh, these crimes. So the first crime that I want to talk to you about are uh, narcotics and drugs. Now, victimless crimes in this country accounts for 86% of the prison population, which is an astonishing amount, which 86%, that's, uh, if you were to look at the earth and the amount of water on the earth compared to the amount of land, which is 75%, there's more people in, uh, in prisons for victimless crimes than for crimes that include ones with a victim. Now, in 2008, there were 7.3 million uh, prisoners in the United States uh, justice system. And in 2005, the average, uh, the average annual amount of money spent on incarcerating citizens in the state of California was $47,000. That's enough to pay your way through the University of Toledo if you're staying off of campus. And the average around the country was around $24,000, which is good enough for three years here. Um, now, the war on drugs began in 1971. And on, on average, the annual cost of this war is around $100 billion a year. Included with the cost of how much it costs to incarcerate a, uh, a citizen for an entire year, which that cost is $150 billion a year. The total cost with the war on drugs and incarcerating a citizen for an entire year is $250 billion out of taxpayer money, which could be spent on other things that I will uh, talk about in a second. $250 billion for one person? $250 billion for the whole, for the whole year, for Every, for the 7.3 million oh. prisoners incarcerated. Now, mandatory sentencing also played a big part in this. And um, the, the role that mandatory sentencing plays is that if you are caught with possession of or narcotics, there's a mandatory amount of time that you have to spend in prison, regardless of how the judge feels about you, if, if the judge feels Oh, you were uh, you're a minor in the wrong place at the wrong time. There's mandatory sentencing uh, procedures that the judge must follow that will lead to uh, incarceration. Now, um, there are countries who are already legalizing uh, drugs and abandoning the war on drugs, their own war on drugs, uh, such as, such as uh, Portugal, who have taken the money away that they spend on the war on drugs and they have put it into rehabilitation facilities for people who are addicted and want to get off of these medications. Are these specific drugs? Every single drug. All of them? Yes. Now this is a, this graph right here, 1971 was where uh, the war on drugs began. As you can see, these are, this is uh, the amount of prisoners. Uh, this is the amount of uh, people incarcerated for drug violations. And right here around 1984, when I, when I was talking about mandatory sentencing, that's when you see this huge uh, peak that just picks up from about 50,000 and <clears throat> a little under 50,000 in 1971. And all the way, it just keeps on going up to over 100,000 uh, for federal prisons. and. Uh, in the year 2002, I believe that's where it ended. And the 
this next chart I have is just uh, it lists different things that are lost due to these people being uh, incarcerated, the loss of productivity, and um, other uh, and other things. Uh, the other uh, the other victimless crime that I wanted to talk to you about that also adds to the amount of money that's being spent by taxpayers to incarcerate these people is uh, prostitution. And this is a very sensitive topic, and this is not to be confused with human trafficking, which uh, lots of people confuse uh, sex trafficking with prostitution. Sex trafficking falls under the category of human trafficking, which includes uh, sweatshops and um, and uh, sweatshops and uh, farm work that uh, some people have been forced to do, which goes around the world. And again, this isn't really covered in the media because it's not a it's not a topic that that's really being focused on in the media. So um, please don't confuse uh, prostitution with uh, human trafficking, which includes the trafficking of both men, women, children, and uh, everything in between. Uh, it, and it, with, with that confusion, that only endangers and um, that only endangers and ignores the problem that we have here with prostitution and uh, and sex and sexual sexual trafficking. Now, for the goal of activists, the key goal here is to make a safer environment for people who choose to engage in this form of work, um, to prevent the abuse of these workers, because with laws that have been passed, these workers have been forced to take their work underground, which means it's not regulated by the government, and they don't have protection for what they choose to do. So they can either be beaten by uh, they can either be attacked by uh, people who they trust, who they think may have uh, come in there for the right intentions because they're trying to survive and make any form of money that they can. Now, there, there's not, there's many types of people who engage in this form of work. I uh, read a book called Super Freakonomics where there was a lady who was in the Navy and she was a computer science, she was a computer scientist for the Navy and she felt like she just wasn't making enough money. $70,000 a year is pretty good, but she felt that it wasn't enough, and she went into, uh, she became a, uh, a, a call, uh, an escort, that's what they call it, an escort in Chicago, and um, she was working 13 hours a week and making $700,000 a year. So, and she had fun doing it, and I, then that's, uh, that's her choice to do. So I also believe that this should be regulated and taxed, like I stated earlier, for the protection of the people who choose to participate in this industry. Now about performance enhancing drugs, the, should they be jailed? There are athletes who take steroids, which isn't a good thing, as indicated there. It's not a good thing at all as they're cheating they're cheating, and they're cheating out others of accomplishments that could have been achieved by them. But should jail be the punishment for them after they've been suspended uh, and stripped for um, and stripped of all the awards that they uh, uh, attained by by uh, attained the wrong way? There was an athlete, Marion Jones, who was a track star here for the United States. She competed in the uh, 2008 Olympics and as well as the 2004 and they found out that she took performance enhancing drugs she was stripped of all of her medals and also received a six month prison sentence so the question becomes that after she has been humiliated shall, is, is that um, sufficient enough to is that sufficient enough or do you have to put her in prison to truly understand the the consequence of her actions. Now there are arguments against uh, 
against what I'm trying to inform you here. Uh, some by my friends, some by uh, by um, by the people who have written on the matter, such as uh, Alan Wertheimer. He argues his argument consists of using DWIs, which um, uh, driving while intoxicated, which at its core is a victimless crime because uh, at, at a point at, he argues that at its core it is a victimless crime because the guy's intoxicated and he's just driving and no one has been harmed, but it has the potential to include a victim if this guy were to lose control of the wheel and harm others or himself. Now, DWI, driving while intoxicated, intoxication also includes alcohol, includes all of the drugs that I, that I uh, listed earlier, but the driving part is where uh, his argument sort of becomes invalid for what I'm trying to inform you about because you shouldn't operate the vehicle while intoxicated. And none of none of the uh, none of the things that I listed before included anyone operating any form of machinery. If you were to use uh, use the the uh, narcotics that you want to use, and you just stay in your home and and uh, avoid engaging with society in a negative manner, then yes, that's perfectly fine. But if you choose to operate any form of machinery, then that should truly be punished by the, by the full extent of the law. And now to wrap things up, uh, I, just, I, I just wanted to inform you guys of what is happening and how much money that is being lost by how much money, tax, how much taxpayer dollars are being spent on incarcerating people who, personally, I do not feel should be incarcerated, and I feel that the um, that the the money spent doing that should uh, go to sort of what Portugal is doing and for rehabilitation for uh, our citizens, so that we can become more productive and um, not have seven point three million of our people in jail for uh, for crimes that aren't harming others but themselves. And uh, that's the, that was the recommendation that I wanted to give. Uh, are there any questions that I can take at the moment? When you say victimless crimes, yes. what is the definition of that? Crime? Well, victim? What you look, no, what you look like, what you looked up, what's the definition of victimless crimes or what you looked up? Because that, that's your, those are like what you consider victimless crimes, but what is that? Or well, this this came from multiple these articles and uh, the the uh, facts that I provided here came from multiple different websites. Victimless crime. The simple definition is just a crime that does not include victims other than the person who is who has uh, who who is partaking for for uh, narcotics who is partaking in the uh, who is partaking in the usage of that narcotics as they they, they might be damaging themselves but they're not damaging the society as a whole, or they're not damaging another individual personally. And big crimes with victims will include murder, I forgot to uh, say that, but will include stuff such as murder, of course you just you took the life of another individual, uh, robbery, you stole from another individual, uh, arson, you uh, you set fire to uh, uh, th that's understood. I, I think now we're going to actually have to move on in order to get the other two presentations in, but that's a question we can hold and ask more on because I'm also interested on if there is a legal or accepted definition of victimless crime, you know, like where those are. But uh, let's move on to the next one. Who's going to go next?